Okay, so um, Rowena um, asked me to talk about charting the locations of the reservoir. So you guys get to hear this talk for the first time because normally I, I kind of, you know, my day job is I'm a gene therapist. I give that talk all the time. I can do that in my sleep. It was a little more challenging to put together this talk because this is on a project that Amfar is funding for us, but we've only been doing it for six months. So I'm gonna kind of take you along on the story of what we hope to do and kind of where we are, and uh, hopefully we'll have some fun while we're doing it. Okay. All right, so let's recap. And I, um, I make no apologies. I live in LA, we have Disneyland. I have children, my husband used to work for Disney, so I kind of try to view the world through the uh, metaphors from the Magic Kingdom. So as a recap for what Rowena was telling you, the problem with trying to cure HIV is this annoying thing that happens, is that sometimes when HIV infects a cell, instead of going in and you know getting on with making more HIV, it actually kind of goes to sleep. And this is when, what we call a latently infected cell. So you just think of it as sleeping beauty, okay? Now that would probably be okay. If HIV went into a cell, went to sleep and did nothing else, we'd be fine. Unfortunately, there's some princes out there in the body. And one of the things that happens is basically our Sleeping Beauty HIV can wake up. And when it wakes up, if you've stopped taking your antiretroviral drugs because you, you, know, you wanted to, unfortunately, what's gonna happen is the infection is gonna flare right back up. So, um, so sort of to sort of um, summarize the important take home message um, already, I would say that all this sleeping HIV in the body is, is, this is what we refer to as the latent reservoir. And an HIV cure must figure out a way to either eliminate that latent reservoir or suppress it and keep it asleep. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the reservoirs and where are they? So this is the slide that Rowena just showed you. Um, and she was um, telling you that we don't really know where these latent reservoirs are. They can be in different parts of the body. And even in these different parts of the body, they could be in different types of cells. So we've really got to drill down and try to figure out where they are. And the, um, my talk today is I'm actually going to talk about is HIV in the brain and are there latent reservoirs in the brain? And are they going to be a problem for curing HIV? So it's not something that maybe you normally think about with HIV. Okay, so if we're gonna learn about the brain, you're gonna have to learn about a new cell you might not have heard of. I think everybody kind of knows about CD4 T cells, yeah, right? So I'm gonna introduce you to this other cell, which quite honestly, is, it's prettier, isn't it? It's called a microglia, okay? It's in the brain. Almost half of the cells in your brain are actually microglia, so it's not a nerve cell, it's kind of like a supporting cell. And the reason microglia are important for HIV is that just like the CD4 T cell, on the outside of microglia, you have CD4 molecules, which means that if HIV gets into your brain, it can then get into this, these microglia and infect them. Okay, so unfortunately, both T cells and microglia are super important, so it's really annoying that HIV has chosen to make its home in them. Um, for the CD4 T cell, you can think about its day job as it basically patrols around the body in the blood and in this, what we call the lymph, lymphoid tissues in the body, basically looking for infections, looking for signs of cancers and orchestrating the rest of the immune response to fix any infections or, or rogue cells that it comes across. And the microglia has a very analogous job in the brain. The microglia basically patrols the brain, looking for signs of infection, looking for damaged cells. And it, it also has a, it, it's kind of like a gardener. It's, it's constantly kind of like checking and pruning the nerve cells in the brain to make sure that everything's healthy. So you can see how incredibly important microglia are for normal brain function. And so because of this, it's perhaps not surprising to realize that if you are infected with HIV and you're um, not able to suppress the virus with antiretroviral medications, you can end up with neurological complications of this infection, something that's um, referred to as neuro-AIDS. And there's all sorts of um, different outcomes um, that can happen from this infection. Luckily, thankfully, um, for the vast majority of people who can control their virus with antiretroviral medications, um, most of the worst aspects of neuro-AIDS are really not that common anymore. Okay, so let's kind of recap where we are so far. 
So I've told you that microglia are potentially a reservoir of HIV in the brain. And the problem is that if we, even if we have latent HIV infections in those microglia, if intermittently, you know, a prince comes along and wakes up that cell, then what, those, um, what happens to those microglia is they kind of, you know, get a bit upset and they get a bit activated. And that can actually cause damage to the rest of the brain, the rest of the, the nerve cells in the brain. So therefore, figuring out a way to get rid of this latent reservoir of HIV-infected microglia, or conversely, um, suppressing it so that it never activates, would be um, potentially of, of you know, very useful and of therapeutic benefit. Okay, so, so far, so good. That's the kind of the problem. Um, the big problem, however, is that, well, we're talking about the brain. And I don't know about you guys. I, I can be persuaded to donate a sample of my blood um, to somebody who wants to kind of investigate things. I'd have a really hard time giving them a piece of my brain. So it's actually quite hard, if you, just on a practical level, to go in and think about looking in the brain of people, especially living people, to see if there's any HIV reservoirs. OK. So because of that, um, AMFAR um, are supporting me um, in a grant that's called HIV and microglial laten latency. And as you've just heard, we're part of these consortium grants called ARCH. And down at the bottom here, um, this is my collaborator on this. So my lab's at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, and my collaborator is Dr. Jonathan Kahn, and he's at Case Western University, which is in Cleveland. So this is kind of exciting because, I mean, seriously, why would I ever go to Cleveland? And now I get to go to Cleveland. <laughs> hmm. So I don't know why you're laughing, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so what are we doing? Well, our goal is to make a mouse model that has human microglia in its brain. And yes, it is a bit Frankensteinian when you think about what we're trying to do. And we're going to use this mouse model to study HIV infection in the human microglia in the mouse brain and to test out our ideas about how we could remove this latent reservoir from the brain. OK. So first of all, I'm going to walk you through in a couple of slides what my lab is doing. And then I'll tell you what Jonathan's lab's going to do as part of this collaboration. OK, so in my lab, um, as Rowena mentioned, we work a lot with specialized mouse models, and we call them humanized mice. And typically, these mice, think of them as receiving a mini bone marrow transplant from a human. We sort of try to replace some of the mouse's immune system with a human immune system. And the way we do it, here's our, here's our mouse. It's a special type of mouse, and it can accept a transplant of human bone marrow stem cells. We pop them into the mouse. We wait about two months. And then if we looked in the mouse and we looked in its blood or its lymph tissue, about 50% of its white blood cells are actually human. Um, here's an example over here. This, every little dot on this is, is, represents one cell in a sample of the mouse blood. And then this quarter here, these are the human CD4 T cells. So you can see our mice have a lot of human CD4 T cells. And that's kind of really cool because that means that unlike normal mice, which obviously don't get infected by HIV, we can infect our humanized mice with HIV, and it allows us to, for example, test out different drugs and, and do meaningful experiments in, in a, a small animal model that, let's face it, is not you know, um, having to use primates. So this has been a really exciting system um, to work with. Um, in those mice, we started looking in their brains, and already we can see HIV-infected cells in the brain of the mice. This is just like a, a kind of a slice through the brain, and this is zooming in, and each little brown dot here is an HIV-infected cell because what we're doing is we're staining for the presence of the HIV protein called P24. Um, however... We're a long way from being where we want to be with this model because um, only about 1% of the um, microglia in the mouse brains are human. Um, I thought I'd actually walk you through how, how, we, how we look at this because I know you've all had breakfast and how often do I get to show a picture of a mouse with its skull <laughs> peeled back. But um, this is what, I, I don't know anything about brains. I had to learn how to do this. But th this is what happens if you take the top of a mouse's head off I do apologize for people who don't like this sort of stuff. Um, and this is a mouse brain. And when they come out, they're pink, which actually surprised me because I always thought brains were gray. 
but no, they're pink. And they're pink because they actually do have some blood in them. So the first thing we have to do is we have to kind of get rid of that blood because that's kind of going to give us like false positives. We know that HIV can be in the mouse blood. So we need to sort of rinse all that away. So we basically rinse the brain out and then it ends up being this kind of like, um, I don't know, it's all like vanilla um, color, isn't it? And then we take that brain, we chop it up, we stick it in a little um, sort of a gradient that can separate out, out all the different types of cells. And then when we finished all that, then we put it in the machine and we, we ask the machine to tell us, are there any human microglia cells there? And when we do that, these little dots appear, you'll see there's far fewer. This is where I get this number of only about 1% of the total microglia in our current best humanized mouse model are human. So that's not really going to be good enough. So the major goal of our AMFAR project is to basically increase the number of human microglia we can get in the brains of the mice in order to make a better mouse model. The way we're going to do that is we're going to make an even weirder mouse. Um, and the idea here is we are going to be able to kill, it, kill off some of the mouse brain, some of its own microglia, to make room for more of the replacement human cells. The way we do that, here's a microglia, is we engineer our microglia so that on its surface it has receptors for a poison. The poison we use is actually diphtheria toxin. Yeah, okay, because we're, you know, bio it's, it's kind of like doing bioterrorism on your mouse. And what happens is when, when we then inject the mouse with diphtheria toxin, the diphtheria toxin goes just to the microglia, it binds to those receptors, and then it basically kills off the microglia. So that when we put our human cells in, we anticipate that more and more of them are going to be able to get into the mouse brain. There's basically, you know, space now for this to happen. Okay. So the other thing I'll tell you about what we're doing is our mice are very compliant and they take their meds really well. They take their meds because they have no choice. We mix um, anti-HIV drugs up with the mouse food, which is it doesn't look very appetizing, but they love it. They wolf it down. They're currently on, um, I think this is Truvada, Raltagravir, and Durinavir. So that they're on a four drug regimen. I don't know which ones are working, but I do know that the combination of these four is well tolerated by the mice and it makes their HIV um, get suppressed. Here's, um, this is a little bit busy, but what this is showing you is over time, here's four different mice that are in different colors and we start them off by infecting them with HIV and this is just measuring the amount of HIV they have in their blood. And then after about four weeks, we start them on the antiretrovirals. And these two mice, we didn't give any antiretrovirals. So their HIV levels stay high. But with these two mice, you see that their HIV levels within three to four weeks have basically got down to undetectable. So these mice are actually proving to be quite a useful um, model to recapitulate what happens in humans when we put people on antiretrovirals. So we're hoping that it's going to be a good model to help us to look at the remnant latent reservoirs of HIV throughout the body, but of course, especially in the microglia in the brain. Okay, so in the last couple of minutes, I just have um, two slides to tell you what um, Jonathan's lab are doing at Case Western. And they're basically um, screening for drugs that could have this property of waking up and purging any latent HIV out of the brain, okay? So another way to think about it is Jonathan is the prince here. Jonathan actually has done a huge amount of work. He's done lots of very complicated, big drug screens that I don't fully understand, but I'm just showing you one piece of data. And so here's a microglia that has a latently infected HIV in it. And the idea is Jonathan's looking for drugs that can wake up the HIV and kind of make that infected microglia sort of show itself so that it can basically be killed and we get rid of this reservoir. And this is what it looks like in cartoon form. And this is just one of the drugs he's identified and showing if you sort of see an anything over here that's green basically means that those cells are now producing HIV. So this is the sort of screen he uses. And he's got some interesting candidate drugs. And so we're excited to now start combining my mouse model with his drugs and put them together and see if we can reduce the latent reservoir, at least in the microglia. Okay. So let me try and summarize what I've told you. So there are multiple cells and tissues probably in the body that can harbor reservoirs of latent HIV. And AMFAR is funding <coughs> us to look at the reservoir in one specific, specific place in the brain in the microglial cells. 
To do that, we are developing a new mouse model that's going to enable us to study human microglia in situ in the brain. And then we will use this mouse model to test candidate drugs that could purge HIV from the microglial cells. Well, wish us luck. And I'll just finish by acknowledging um, the members in my lab who are working on this project, the guys in Jonathan's lab, and then I also have other colleagues at USC who are hugely important because I know nothing about brains, so I'm very indebted to some of the neuroscientists at USC, and I also know nothing about drugs. Gosh, I don't know how I ever get funded. So I, I have a great pharmacist at USC as well. Okay, so thanks for your attention. I'm happy to...